Hi, in today's episode, I'm building a new fixture plate for my CNC router. I hope you come along. The fixture plate itself is 16 mm thick cast aluminum. The material is called ATP5 and it's made by Vista Metals. I chose cast aluminum because it's stress-free and will not warp when we machine it. I use Fusion 360 for all of the modeling. Here you see me set up a dial indicator. I'm aligning one edge of the plate with the y-axis and I'm just going to run that down and sh shift the plate until I have it to within like a tenth of a millimeter or so. The next step is to zero out the z-axis for the tool. X and y are already set. So I did not indicate the entire side, and therefore I don't really know the true depth of cut. Therefore, I'm going to take three steps to establish that first pass so that I will not break off the tool. And then there is a final pass with 0.1 millimeter step over and full depth of cut. Next, I'm running a dial indicator down the opposite edge and that is so that I can get an understanding how far out it's out of square and so that I can gauge the first depth of cut tool will take. And I was lucky because it was out less than a tenth of a millimeter. Actually the whole plate in itself was rather square when I received it. Here I am now installing the new tool. Uh, to the front we have a bit more space so we can go with a larger diameter tool now. And I wanted to show you that I always use some alcohol to wipe down the shaft, especially if it's a brand new tool, a brand new end mill. And I also clean the collet or inspect it if there's anything in it when I used it on cutting metals because of the cutting fluid, which is also a lubricant. Why I do that is because the tool, especially if it's an upcut bit, it wants to pull out of the collet. And when that happens, it will break. So I always make a point that there is no oil on the shaft or on the collet itself and I tighten it down uh, as good as I can. So I ended up not using that end mill because it was a two flute. I found another bit that was yet brand new and that I hadn't used yet. It has a zirconium coating on it, and I only wanted to make one finishing pass. So the depth of cut is 0.2 millimeter, and the step down is a full depth of 16 millimeter. Now we are back to the two flute upcut one quarter inch spiral bit that you saw me install earlier. It will make the 12 mounting holes that we need to fasten the plate to the 8020 material. The first stop is to make a relief hole for the old head. For the cam, I use the Fusion 360 bore function, and there is usually a down spiral of 2 degree in there, and I change that to 3 degree. So 
So the next up is the 8 millimeter or M8 through hole. It's going to be an 8.4 millimeter hole through the plate. We made a 14 millimeter hole in the last operation and we're going to follow up with an 8.2 millimeter through hole. The problem that I have is I need to get the chips evacuated out of that hole and I think that's not going to be so easy. So I have a four millimeter tool here, but it's stick out is 35 millimeter. That is not ideal and I don't like it, but I have really no other way for chip evacuation if I want to use the mist coolant. So we're going to try it and then So the spindle right now is at 12,000 RPM. We are going down in a three degree spiral with only 400 millimeter per minute. But that looks okay to me right now. And I think we're gonna let it run that way. The air blast is increased to two bar, and that seems to help uh, a little bit. you see me taking the aluminum plate off and also the MDF plate which we don't need anymore and I'm reinstalling the aluminum fixture plate now uh, using the M8 through holes that we have just cut to mount it in its final position realigning it on the y-axis For the facing operation of the plate, we are going to use a two flute, one inch tool with round carbide inserts. So I've mounted now the plate in its final position and in the next operation we need to face the surface. I have indicated the surface out and we are off by about 0.3 millimeter, lowest to highest spot. The carbide insert end mill did a great job of finishing off the surface of the fixture plate. I'm really happy with the result. And in the next step, we will create 150 holes, 6.8 millimeter diameter to cut an M8 thread later on. Now on the top of that hole, we have a step. That step will be a 10 millimeter diameter hole so that we can utilize that to locate a pin inside the fixture plate. Fusion 360 has a repeating pattern function and that makes it very simple and easy to come up with one recipe for one hole and then apply that to the rest of the entire plate. I use that function. Also, I use the standard two degree down spiral or helical cut to clean out the 6.8 millimeter hole using a four millimeter cutter and probably in the neighborhood of 12,000 RPM. That's how I start out. The feed rate will be 600 millimeter per minute and we'll adjust from there.
I've paused the machine after the first row of holes. Uh, the cutter is still okay. I don't like the sound that it makes because it has to rechew its own chips. And in the beginning, we had too much fluid come out, so I was able to reduce that. I played around with the RPM up to 15,000, but that didn't really help things. It just makes the chips smaller because the chip load uh, is also smaller. So we are now into the job with about 40 holes and there is another 80 to go at least. I have some machines set up now the way that it runs without me doing anything. Um, it sounds much better. It does go slow, but I'd rather have it go slow, not break a tool and don't have to babysit it. So I'm going to let it run for the rest of the job as you see it right now here. If you made it all the way to the end of the video, then obviously you're interested in a CNC router or into CNC machining or machining in general. Now, I'm really happy how this project came along so far. I've machined 150 holes without breaking a tool. There are two reference edges now on the plate and the surface finish came out super. Now, there are two reasons why the surface finish came out good. Reason number one is the spindle is trimmed to one hundredth of a millimeter on a hundred and fifty millimeter radius. That's really good and I for sure will not touch it again. That took a long time. And reason number two is that the tool that I've used has a side radius. And usually a bull nose or any tool with a larger radius will leave a nicer surface finish. So in the next video I'm going to thread mill using the router 150 M8 bolts. Threats, that is. I hope you come along.